So up next, we have the Chancellor of UMD who is here to speak with us, Chancellor Lindley Black. Thank you very much, Danica. And thank you all who are here today, and I congratulate you for not taking this day off to sleep late and to do, and to do nothing, but instead making this a day on to join together as a great community and to rededicate ourselves to serving our neighbors in need. We are also here to celebrate and remember the ever-present vision that Dr. King left for us. He left us not only a vision of inspiration, but also a road map. A road map for greater equality, justice, and opportunity for all people. Dr. King started us down the road on December the 5th, 1955, when he spoke in Montgomery, Alabama, to the first Montgomery Improvement Association mass meeting. Many people point to that speech as the beginning of the Civil Rights Movement. So we've been down this road for many years now, over half a century. But unfortunately, we still have a long way to go. Why is that? Why, after over 55 years, are we still not further down this road of promise and closer to the dream that Dr. King articulated so clearly? Yes, we have made progress on this journey since the segregated lunch counters and buses and other public places of the 1950s. We no longer see the signs that I saw as a young boy growing up in Memphis, Tennessee that told us that the whites were to drink out of one water fountain and the coloreds were to drink out of another water fountain. Yes, we can look back down this road and see where we were and how far we've come. That's the good news. But if we really open our eyes and see where we are now and how far we are from our destination, we realize how far we still have to go. So why is that? We have gotten rid of the laws that forced segregation and, and inequality. We all now have the legal right to vote. Although the legal right does not always mean it's easy for all of our citizens to vote. We now have diversity programs at every level of education and in virtually all major corporations that promote the importance of differences and the need to value individuals. So why are we not further down this road? Well, one reason is that diversity programs and laws by themselves do not force anyone to change their attitudes or their malicious behavior. The problem is that, not only, that, is that not only do we not celebrate and understand differences among our neighbors, our colleagues, and our families, but too often we act in ways that are selfish, that are malicious, and cause factions among us. If you had told me 40 years ago that in 2011 we would still have the racial, religious, and social strife we do today, I wouldn't have believed it. We thought we were making progress back then. Progress in civil rights, in integration, in stopping war and genocide. But instances of despicable actions and attitudes on our campus, in our city, and across our nation not only continue, but in many ways they seem to increase. In a speech he gave on April the 7th of 1957, at the Dexter Avenue Baptist Church in Montgomery, Alabama, Dr. King reinforces that our journey is difficult and that we must be persistent. He said, it never comes with ease. It comes only through the hardness and persistence of life. The beautiful thing about this is that there are a few people who've been over in the land and they've spied enough to say, that even though there are giants there, we can possess the land because we've got the internal fiber to stand up amid anything that we have to face. So what kind of internal fiber do we have in the year 2011? When we are faced with discrimination, with injustice, and with violence, how do we respond? When we see people around us suffering, living in poverty and needing our help, what do we do? 
Dr. King's vision calls upon us to take individual action, to march and to keep on marching. On March the 25th of 1965, he spoke to the more than 1,000 priests, rabbis, nuns, and ministers who joined him on the historic march from Selma to Montgomery. He said this to them. He said, let us therefore continue our triumphant march to the realization of the American dream. Let us march on segregated housing until every ghetto of social and economic depression dissolves and Negroes and whites live side by side in decent, safe, and sanitary housing. Let us march on segregated schools until every vestige of segregated and inferior education becomes a thing of the past and Negroes and whites study side by side in the socially healing context of the classroom. And let us march on poverty until no American parent has to skip a meal so that their children may eat. March on poverty until no starved man walks the streets of our cities and towns in search of jobs that don't exist. Let us march on poverty until every wrinkled stomach in Mississippi is filled and the idle industries of Appalachia are realized and revitalized and broken lives in sweltering ghettos are mended and remolded. My friends in Duluth, I believe that we do have the internal fiber to take action as individuals, but to also join together to march on this pathway that Dr. King set for us and not stop until we reach greater equality, justice, and opportunity for all of our neighbors. Thank you.